Hello! It is Friday, October 22nd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Friday puzzle, so very possibly pretty difficult, and our first themeless puzzle of the week. So that is something to look forward to in just a few moments. But first, let's mention the Patreon campaign, which is uh, available at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video. That's how you can support this channel and series directly. And in particular, if you're in the uh, benefactor tier or above, there's a poll currently being run to determine what the design of the mug that you're going to receive will be. And uh, the Let's Check the Crosses design has pulled out into the lead. So if you feel otherwise, you should get in there and vote if you're in an appropriate tier. And um, plenty of other benefits of the Patreon if you're interested. Bonus video solves, special access to the Discord chat server, and so on. So check that out. And then also there's the new Twitter account, at The Daily Solve. So go ahead and follow that if you'd like to see tweets about this series each day. All right, I'm going to move along because this might be a long, difficult solve. You never know. And there are quite a few comments to read. Well, quite a few, but several comments to read from yesterday's puzzle. There were actually quite a few uh, comments in which people shared their experiences with the, the difficulty of yesterday's puzzle and the theme and so on. But I'm going to there isn't enough time, unfortunately, because there are a number of comments about knowledge that I either didn't have or, um, you know, ha had a bit of fuzziness around. So let's deal with those. All right. Jeff Bartman explains that EFTs, E-F-T-S, the plural, are an adolescent life stage of most, I won't say all because there's probably an exception, newts a type of salamander, an amphibian, not a reptile. Sorry about that. That was sort of an embarrassing error in retrospect. Uh, Fs are interesting because they are terrestrial. After the tadpoles undergo metamorphosis, they go live on land for a while before returning back to water to live the rest of their lives as aquatic adults. It is quite interesting. So there you go, Fs. A little bit of borderline crossword ease comes up often and is uh, an adolescent life stage of many newts, many or all newts. And a reptile. I'm sorry, an amphibian, not a reptile. All right. Bradley explains that the notion of a baseball team putting up a picket fence, which came up in yesterday's puzzle, is when they score one run per inning for several consecutive innings. This makes the scoreboard, which so shows how many runs were scored in each inning, look like a picket fence. This is truly some inside baseball, as it's a term that's not used very often. Unlike, in my opinion, the term inside baseball, which is used enormously, particularly in political coverage, I would say, including even sometimes here in the UK, where baseball is, uh, I think, pretty rarely played. All right. Remy corrects a very strange error on my part. Remy says, the French marine explorer is indeed called Jacques-Yves Cousteau. That's a, yes, of course it is. I decided somehow his name was Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Jacques-Yves Cousteau must be a relative. I don't know. Remy says, I'm not sure who Jean-Jacques Cousteau is. Maybe you were thinking about his son, Jean-Michel, or the philosopher, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. I'm pretty sure I was thinking of Jean-Jacques Rousseau and mixing up the two men's names and conflating them. Not really sure what was going on there. Anyway, thank you for the correction, Remy. Kathy Swope says, amazing solve of the clue and also so much e-yelling at potholder. Sorry about that. <laughs> Should have guessed potholder earlier. Anyway, Kathy uh, continues, the OK Corral is in fact a real place in Tombstone, Arizona. The famous gunfight took place between lawmen, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday being the most well-known, and outlaws in 1881 when Arizona was a territory. So there we go. I was pretty sure it was a real thing, but it's good to have that full context. And indeed, that's been, I suppose, dramatized many times in films over the years. All right, Joseph George Blaze says, an over in cricket is a set of six balls bowled by one bowler from one end of the pitch, after which both the bowler and end are switched so that someone bowls another over of six in the opposite direction. An over can be longer if any no balls or wides are bowled, as these require an extra ball. All right, there we go, some cricket knowledge. Okay, Chris Lavornia points out a fun fact. William Sean, who was referenced in yesterday's puzzle, is the father of famous character actor Wallace Sean, 
who you might know from the movie My Dinner with Andre, or as Vizzini, the man who challenges Wesley to a battle of wits in The Princess Bride. So there we go. Indeed, I do recognize Wallace Shawn. Um, okay, great. That was a whole bevy of, of uh, comments about clues and some really interesting information and context, which I'm always glad to have. I'm always really impressed by the, <laughs> the breadth of knowledge that is found in the comments section on these videos. So thank you to everyone who, who regularly writes in. I really enjoy it. Oops. Okay, let's move on to today's puzzle. This is a Friday crossword constructed by Robin Weintraub. Certainly a name I recognize, a venerable and prolific crossword constructor. And in fact, a commenter at one point, maybe a month ago, pointed out last time I solved a Robin Weintraub puzzle or one of the recent times, that Robin Weintraub is known as the queen of Fridays or the queen of the Friday puzzle. So that's nice. We'll be solving a Friday puzzle by an old pro at this particular day. There certainly is a community of people who really like themeless puzzles in particular, and I'm participating in that uh, competition league full of exclusively themeless puzzles. And I have to, I'll have to solve that today, actually. I've got to not, not forget to do that before the deadline. And then the solve will, of course, go up on the Patreon uh, channel for backers. Okay, anyway, let's get going with this uh, Friday crossword. Abundant could be ample, could maybe be other things, but that comes to mind first. So let's let's look at it. Helicopter traffic reporter on The Simpsons. I actually have not a clue here. I'm sorry. Intended could be meant. Intended. Intended meaning. Bends at the Bolshoi. So this would be the Bolshoi ballet. So these would be plies, that sort of uh, double kneed bend in ballet. I forgot the words in brackets. Could be la la. And as a reminder, when you see these brackets, it means that the answer is going to be sort of nonverbal, as though it were in brackets. Uh, I mean, I, La La is, I mean, I, I could have La La wrong, but regardless, this explanation holds. Um, it, 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 it is verbal. It's coming out of, well, it's vocal, I suppose. Let's say that. It's vocal, but not verbal. It comes out of your mouth, but it's not really words. It's not language per se. So that's kind of what that's getting at most of the time. All right, here we have a local alternative. Local alternative. You know, what's funny is that it's hard to know what this is because it could be an alternative to something local. So it could be a nationwide chain or a global chain or something, or it could be an alternative that is local. So it could be a mom and pop shop or something like that. It could be you could mean, I think anyway, you could mean opposing things with this particular cluing. And it's probably intentionally vague because it is a Friday and it's a, it's a tough day. All right. Everything's going to be fine. Relax. Right. This helicopter reporter. I just don't know what that is. Digital color presentation with a question mark. So there's some sort of pun or wordplay going on as indicated by the question mark. Digital color presentation. So digital could be fingers. That's where... Uh, your digits, that's where that comes from. So this could be nail art, digital nail, nail rainbow. That doesn't sound like anything. Let's keep looking. Could this be Arnie? Just looking at names for the traffic reporter that are plausible in this film. Oh, well, maybe actually, because seriously is in earnest. And then Men in Black antagonists. So Men in Black, the uh, Tommy Lee Jones, Will Smith, film about aliens, ETs, extraterrestrial. So that does make the helicopter traffic reporter Arnie. So there we go. Okay, here we have actress Pompeo of Grey's Anatomy. I have never seen Grey's Anatomy and I don't know who this is. I apologize. I am I often feel as though I'm living under a rock to quote one of yesterday's theme answers. Adornments sometimes made with cuckoo nuts. Um, linguistically, this looks like it might be be lays related to the the floral wreath placed around one's neck in Hawaii, but I don't really know. That's a bit of a guess. So let's let's look at these crosses. Blank and Basie, 1963 jazz album. Oh, I think this might be Ella and Basie. Ella Fitzgerald and Count Basie, both great jazz musicians. So let's see if that. I mean, that does fit with lay, but let's keep looking. To hold up could be to last, as in to, to not wither and die to sort of hold up under pressure or to continue. Um, 
I mean, it could arguably be loot if it's holed up in a robbery, but that seems less precise. Vapors don't get it. Ash, I suppose. A vapor, an e-cigarette, wouldn't drop ash as a regular cigarette would. So bucolic spots, this could be lays, L-E-A's or lees. One of those words I, I, I read more often than I speak, unfortunately. Um, so this is a sort of pastoral landscape, a field, you know, where sheep might graze, for instance. And bucolic means sort of beautifully pastoral, verdant, maybe, that sort of thing. Okay, so this could be Ellen Pompeo. Oh, right, so digital color presentation, nail polish. There we go. So the adornments sometimes made with cuckoo nuts are lays, in fact. And then uh, this Pompeo really looks like Ellen. I mean, it, I suppose there could be other names like Elia or something, but I'm guessing Ellen. Long run. Could be an eon, as in a very long span of time. Um, I'm not completely confident of that, so let's check the crosses here. How you might count to five. Oh, it could be on one hand. There we go. Five fingers on a hand. Five digits on a hand, for that matter. Okay, local alternative. Oh, right. So this is this would be a, a local train, an alternative to a local train. So a local train stops at every, well, maybe not every, but it, it stops frequently, whereas an express train skips many of the stops to get to the terminals faster. Um, and so, right. So that is, that is the alternative that is an alternative to something local as opposed to, uh, uh, you know, an, an alternative thing that is a local one. So there we go. Here we have blank Explorer. <laughs> I think this is MSN Explorer, a, an outdated, what was this? Was it a web browser? I don't even remember what MSN Explorer was. I think it might have been a web browser, maybe. But, but Microsoft had Internet Explorer. I don't remember what this was, but I'm pretty sure there was, at one point, an Internet-related product from Microsoft called MSN Explorer. But let's check the cross here. Problem for a king. Problem for a king. I don't know. I'm going to delete this for now, just in case. Um, we haven't really finished looking through the early across clues, so let's do that. Calendar heading named for a Norse deity. Um, it could be... So it says calendar heading, which first brought to mind months of a calendar, but dates, uh, days of the week are also on a calendar. And I know that Wednesday, I believe, comes is sort of the equivalent of Odin's Day, and Thursday is Thor's day. So it could be wed or thu for Wednesday or Thursday. Let's see if this helps. Nation conspicuously missing from the Wilson proposed League of Nations in briefs. Well, Woodrow Wilson, president of the United States who proposed the League of Nations, uh, would certainly be pretty conspicuous if his country, the United States of America, were missing. So let's put that in there and then say Thursday for the calendar heading. Tries chai, say. You know, takes tea, takes a tea. I don't know. Chai tea, I assume, is what this is about here. Tries chai, say. I'm not sure. Artist colony in a desert. Don't know offhand. Vegetables also called ladies' fingers. Okra. Uh, I read a funny... Um, I don't remember where I saw this anecdote from somebody who had tried to make a dessert involving ladies' fingers, which also is a name used for a, um, a baked good. They're the sort of long, thin, I don't know, little sort of eclair-like things, I guess. And uh, they baked, they're very confused, but they, they baked this, this dessert with okra and were utterly baffled. Okay, Santa's sleighful could be toys. A quartet in Revelation. Heralds? No. So this would be oh the four horsemen of the apocalypse, of course. In in Revelation, the book of Bible describing the sort of apocalyptic events. Um 
artist colony in a desert. I don't know what that is. Colon or semicolon in an emoticon could be eyes. And bonny ones, bonny lasses in, in uh, Scottish dialect. Children's author or illustrator Hoff. I'm not sure. So this tries try does look like takes. Takes tea in some form, but I'm not sure precisely how. Ah, Heckerling, who directed Look Who's Talking and Clueless. This is the director, Amy Heckerling. So children's author and illustrator could be Sid, but I don't know. So maybe tries try is takes a tea. Sort of an odd way of phrasing it, but I don't know. I don't, if, these, if these answers weren't so long, I would be more likely to put it in and check the crosses, but I don't think I'm going to get these at this stage. Courtroom conclusion. And here we have comment after an amazing statement. Could start with that or it's the truth or something. Cell phone plan concern could be data. Here we have subject for class cutups. That would be anatomy, I assume. Anatomy class, you might cut up a frog or something. Cry made while swinging a baton. Um, I don't know. It could be something dealing with a parade or a march of some sort. I'm just jumping around looking at some crosses at this point. One fourth of kiss. So this is the phrase, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, and then here we have Tennessee governor who became president. Um, Polk, there was a President James K. Polk, maybe he was Tennessee governor. It just fits in four letters with a P. 1982 Disney film with a 2010 sequel is Tron. It covers a lot of ground. I don't know, soil maybe? Endor native. This would be, I guess, from um, Star Wars, uh, Return of the Jedi, an Ewok. Here we have lead in to cow or lion. A sea cow or a sea lion. And then blank Sarnoff, Warner Brothers CEO beginning in 2019. Not a clue. It covers a lot of ground, right? So this could be soil with that S. A Roman army leader. So this could be a centurion. Um, the hundred, I don't know, important military figures in Rome. They were so named because there were a hundred of them. Okay, courtroom conclusion. Oh, case dismissed. There we go. Okay, right. So this isn't... Tr okay, so this isn't takes a tea, tries try. It's takes a sip, which makes much more sense, actually. Tries it, takes a sip. And sounds better than takes a tea. Okay. Card game in which jacks are the four... are the top four trumps. Um... I think there's a card game called Scat. I actually have no idea what it is, but I've heard of it. And then here we have comment after an amazing statement. Comment after an amazing statement. I'm not sure with this K-I-N at the end. All right, dining with one's child. I mean, I assume it will start with eating, because dining, eating, and it fits in the crosses. Um, could be eating at home, maybe. There's a there's a question mark, which means there's wordplay or pun, but sometimes that just means it's a little bit cutesy. Um, I don't know, but let's keep let's keep going. Countertop or flooring materials. This would be laminates, uh, sort of imitation materials that are, I guess, plastic or vinyl of some kind. Okay, direction of many a lavatory on a plane would be aft. Oh, dining with one's child, I see. This is eating for two. This is a, this is, if someone's pregnant and they're colloquially eating for two because uh, they have a child as well. Okay. They're full of opinions. Not sure, like a tapestry would be woven. Olympic skater Midori. Midori Ito sounds familiar to me, so let's try that. Say no more. It could be I know, as straightforward as that. 
Participated in a pistol duel. Could be Drew. Drew pistol, maybe? Let's check the crosses, though. Uranus, E.G., or Uranus, E.G. Oh, a god. Right. Roman, a Roman god. Uh, this would be what? Neptune, I suppose? No. No. Those are both Roman. Sorry. Neptune is Poseidon. Uranus is... I don't remember. Aries, maybe? Sorry. Someone will tell me. <laughs> really come down. Not sure. Move, maybe ominously. Sneak or sidle or slink. I'm not sure. Kitty food. With a question mark. So another sort of pun or bit of wordplay. But I'm not sure. Walk. Walk in quotation marks. And here we have spirits of Greece. Oh, it could be Uzo, the spirit, popular in Greece. And then move, oh, I see, move maybe ominously, ooze, right? So something could be oozing ominously, like the ooze or the blob in the films of those names. Really come down. It could be sour. You could really come down on something really sour on it, maybe. I don't know. Walk. I mean, that would make this go on something. And that would make this soaker. I don't know. Kitty food. Poker? Is there something with... Oh, actually, really come down could be poor, if that were P. Walk would be go on something. Take to another dimension. Not sure. Herb often used in preparing potatoes and omelets. Oh, uh, chive maybe? With that V there, it seems pretty plausible. Upped, increased presumably. And then here we have Blank Chang, Harry Potter's first love interest. Again, unfortunately, just have not a clue. They're full of opinions. It probably ends with an S. And is on first. So it looks like maybe is on first base in baseball, but it also could be is on first. Is, a, is going on to the stage, for instance, first, first or, the, or something like that. Could be either of those. I'm not sure which it is. They're equally plausible to me. Neither is jumping out at me with an answer. Let's look elsewhere for the time being, and we'll come back. Got out of Dodge there. Um, say, sorry, got out of Dodge, say. Something town, left town. There we go. It's a common expression for essentially fleeing. Oh, look at that. Small amphibian is an eft. Wow. Uh, a direct repeat from yesterday and a tie-in to that bit of knowledge explained today. So an amphibian. There we go. And then this would make Warner Brothers CEO Anne Sarnoff. So there we go. Didn't know that, but I suppose now I do. I probably will forget. Some kitchen appliances. This is probably a brand name. GE's uh, appliances manufactured by General Electric. And here we have what might be found between X and Z. Well, with these crosses, it's pretty straightforward. Looks like a generation gap. So that's skipping over generation Y, which is, I guess, the millennials, I suppose. The generation in which I find myself. A comment after an amazing statement. Um, oh, let that sink in. There we go. Sorry. Okay. There we go. That was pretty straightforward when we finally had enough crosses to make it so. And then a problem for a king. Um, what is this? Mata? Is that Mata Hari or something? I don't really know what this is. Sorry if this is very clear. I mean, I just because this I thought was MSN Explorer, but it might be something else. Um, I'm sorry. I actually just <laughs> I don't really have a clue. Something that may be packed could be... Oh, wait a second. Sorry. I blatantly misspelled generation. How did I do that? Generation with an E. Okay, sorry. So let's, does that help here? Problem for a king, mate. Oh, yes, mate in chess. Um, uh, checkmate 
would be a problem for a king in chess because when the king uh, is checkmated, the game's over. Okay, so there, it is MSN Explorer over there. Um, cry made while swinging a baton. I mean, it could be hit it, maybe if it were a conductor of a big band or something. Oh, and then something that may be packed would be heat. You could be packing heat if you possess a firearm. And then put a, oh, didn't look at this clue. Put a tiger in your tank, sloganeer. That must be Esso, which is a um, uh, gas station, petrol station brand named for Standard Oil, which is the abbreviation S-O, and then S-O, the phonetic uh, spelling and pronunciation of it. Okay. Upt probably ends with a D, right? Oh, they're full of opinions would be op-eds, uh, opinion pieces in newspapers. Take to another dimension. Take to another dimension. Boy, why am I not seeing this? could be crop as in a photograph. You change the dimensions of the photograph by cropping it, removing area from, from one side. Go on strike, walk. Is, is walk a euphemism for, or sort of an idiomatic way of saying to go on strike, to walk? I'm gonna, I'll walk. I always think of that meaning as quitting rather than going on strike, but maybe. I mean, upped could be hiked, so that would fit, actually. Does that help here? Blank Chang, Harry Potter's first love interest. Again, I just have not read these or seen these, so I'm not sure. Could be Cho, I don't know. Uh, kitty food, looks like poker chip. What does that mean? Is the kitty, does that have a gambling meaning? Is that what one would call the house in poker or the place where the chips are or the anti-pot. or something. I don't know. Someone will have to tell me. I just don't know. This really looks like go on strike and is on first uh, opens. You go on first, you know, in, I don't know, sport lineup or something. You're, you open or you're the, actually, I guess more accurately, the first band that's going to play a set in the evening. You'd go on first, you'd open the show. There we go. All right, so that was the Friday puzzle. I found that to be, for the most part, I would say a pretty straightforward solve. There were some long, some quite long answers. Um, and I guess all of these um, acrosses, it took me a while to solve those. Express train came pretty quickly. Eating for two, fairly quickly, but uh, took a bit longer. Go on strike took me to the very end. I'll have to um, I'll have to find out what if that is a, if that's simply a straightforward uh, bit of uh, language to refer to going on strike. Just uh, unfamiliar to me, but that doesn't mean anything. There's plenty of things that I find unfamiliar, as demonstrated by the comments every day explaining things that I slightly misunderstood or didn't know at all. Um. But yes, I thought a good solid Friday puzzle, maybe um, a slightly smoother solve for me than Fridays can be, um, but a good range of answers, I would say. Uh, a big spread of types of, of knowledge and lengths and everything else. I thought it was good. Let me know how you fared. I hope you enjoyed this puzzle. Oh, and then poker chip. Someone explained this to me as well. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this puzzle, <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed the video and the series generally. And if you do, please do subscribe to the channel so that you can get notifications about these videos as they go up each day. And uh, if you subscribe to the new uh, Twitter account at The Daily Solve, you can similarly see uh, tweets about this each day. And uh, if you know someone who might like this series, please do pass it along. And finally, if you would particularly like to directly support this channel and help it be a sustainable effort going forward in the long term, then uh, consider contributing to the Patreon campaign, which starts at a monthly contribution of just three pounds or the equivalent in your local currency. With that, you will get bonus solves as they go up, as well as enhanced access to the uh, 
Discord chat server. And as a reminder, the Discord chat server in general is free for anyone to join. And there's a fun community of uh, crossword constructors growing over there. And also today, in the last day, there's been a fun uh, bit of discussion in the New York Times crossword channel in there about people solving the crossword that was published on the date of their birthday. That's been sort of fun to see. And depending on when you were born, if you were born before, I think, sometime in 1993, you can solve all of those puzzles for free. Uh, there's, a, there's a website called Xword Info that has um, archives of the what is the pre-Will Shorts era of crosswords, which started in 1993. So if you were born before then, you can solve your birthday crossword too and discuss it in the Discord chat server with the other folks who have been doing the same thing. Anyway, um, that was a bit of a digression from the uh, from the talk about the Patreon campaign. But in addition to the things I have already mentioned about the Patreon campaign, there are also some people who contribute at a generous level and are thanked by me because I do very much appreciate it. And today, I would like to thank Kathleen Quinn and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and, additionally, a new addition to these ranks, the incomparable Shantanu Bhatia. So thank you so much, Kathleen, Hood Monster, and Shantanu for your extremely generous support. I really appreciate it. So um, if you'd like to join them, head over to patreon.com slash daily solve. There's a link in the description field underneath each video. And with that, I think this video has reached its natural conclusion. So I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, another themeless puzzle, and most likely a little more difficult than this one. So I hope you join me for that. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.